blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, whose kingdom calls all to the love which endures. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, you, Lord, were at our side, all glory be yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came not to condemn, but to pardon. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You taught us that there is great rejoicing in heaven for a single sinner who repents. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You pardon much and those who love much. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the whole Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. 
My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods. Softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty. And your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The until meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A uh, reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be real, revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation has made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in the hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit we also groan within ourselves as we await, as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ is the sower, all who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, but some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks in parables. These parables are simple stories on the surface that seem easy to explain and easy to understand, but there's also another part of it that is veiled, that it's difficult to understand, that it has to be applied to our own lives. We have to sit and think, what is he saying to us and how is he challenging us in some way? Although he was small, Lionel looked far more mature than his 10 years when he climbed aboard the train high in the Andes of the country of Peru. Polite and very serious, he sat down on one of the hard wooden benches and said he was going to visit his brother in Juliaca, a city about half an hour away. A commentator tells this story. Like most Andean people, Lionel was from a farming family. He had the dark skin and high cheekbones of the Chikawa Indians who were his ancestors, and like them, his family lived close to the land, mainly growing potatoes. Could they make a living at that? He shrugged. It depends on the weather, he said. If there's, good, if there's a good harvest, yes. If there's a bad harvest, we don't have enough to eat and we go hungry. The train rumbled past fields where crops flourished. Like the description in today's psalm, the furrows had been watered. The hills seemed to overflow with abundance. But Lionel's family and millions of other people around the world who depend on tiny pl plots of land for their livelihood know they are at the mercy of the weather. A good harvest means they will have enough to eat and a little left over to sell at the market to buy shoes, notebooks, and pencils so their children can go to school. A late frost, a drought, or too much rain can mean a poor harvest or none at all. And that brings hunger and forces family members or entire families to move to the city to search for work. Every spring throughout the Andes, farmers plow the fields with oxen if they are somewhat well off. And if they can't afford it, or they make uh, the rows with hose. 
Usually the man opens the furrow and the woman drops in the seed, covering them carefully. It's as if they're handling this seed very carefully because it will depend on whether they live or die. And how much the farmer depends on the weather or the price of the seed or transportation or factors largely beyond their control, and I don't have to explain that to most of you. Today's readings are filled with the images of planting and growing. These images are familiar to the people of the Old and New Testaments. Much of this is familiar to us who live between the Lust Hills and the Missouri River. Like Lionel's family, many of us or our neighbors depend on the land for their, our livelihood. We know that a farmer sows seeds without knowing what the future will bring. It is not enough to simply have us just willy-nilly not be allowing the seed of God to be planted in us when we hear it from this place each weekend. We have to tend to it. We have to provide the right soil. We have to have the right weather in putting ourselves in the circumstances that allow that seed to grow, which is the seed of Jesus Christ that's planted within us. We can ignore it. We can plant ourselves in seed of corruption or in, in soil of corruption. We can ignore what God is sending us, but that isn't what he wants. He says, I give you what's greatest. Now you provide the weather, the soil, the conditions to make the seed I plant in you grow. And the best way to do that is to give it away. Don't keep it for yourself. Isaiah speaks of this. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I send it. He sends it to you. Care for it well. Hold that seed in your heart and then spread it to others. We must receive the word of God not as passive listeners, but as Christians committed to doing and having doing the word of God, doing the work of God and having the seed of the word of God planted in us so that every word spoken, every merciful deed, everything we do and think is carried out in God's will. And even every empathetic thought may be the occasion of being the vehicle of God's love. With the word of God as our source, we can be witnesses of Jesus Christ and pass this good seed of the word of God to all we encounter each day and each moment of our lives. Jesus died for us and gave his body to us so that we may live. Let's die of self, allow the seed of Christ to be planted in us, the seed of the martyrs be planted in, in us, the spilled blood of those who have died for the faith be planted in us so that we can bring the word of God to the whole world, the saving power of Jesus Christ. My friends, you have the seed. Plan it and live it well. God has loved us. Let us love one another and be the people of God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Inspired by the word of God, we turn now to the Lord with our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers around the world. For the church that we may emulate the model of the sower and that the seed we sow may produce good fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the thorns of disease, hunger, poverty, that have a chokehold on most the most vulnerable may be cleared away, thereby allowing the fruits of God's goodness to flourish in all corners of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to gun violence, that we may collectively turn toward peace and bring forth the world without the senseless loss of life and shootings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling to recover from natural disasters, storms and floods, fires and earthquakes, that they may find assistance, comfort, and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on summer vacation, that they may return home safely, renewed and refreshed from their travels, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Paulette Rice, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, for their families, and for all who are frightened, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all, we turn to you in our time of need. Instill your word ever more deeply in us so that we may bear fruit to be shared with others. Grant this in all our prayers through your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with St. Joseph, her most ble Mary's most blessed spouse, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins Oops, of the excuse world. me. Let's sing this. I apologize. <laughs> I'm so used to saying it. Go right ahead. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Please join in singing number 200, Now Thank We All Our God. Yes, of love and still. 